are listening to the Prep Talk to Real Meditation for Real Alcoholics. This is a pre-meditation talk for the 30-minute exercise that follows. It is only 20 minutes long, but contains some information and direction that are very important before you begin the actual meditation exercise. Please listen all the way through before attempting to meditate. You are welcome to use and share any of these recordings. And now, here is the pre-meditation prep talk to Real Meditation for Real Alcoholics. As an alcoholic, as an alcoholic who doesn't drink anymore, or who plans to stop, you probably consider your decision to give up drinking to be the most important decision you have ever made in your life. That probably has been true. That decision has brought you to now, where you now have made a new decision, and that decision is to meditate. If you follow through with it, this will be the most important decision of your life. It will be the most significant thing you have ever done, not only for yourself, but for your family, for your loved ones, and believe it or not, your generations of family to follow. Now, I do suggest that you go back and try the sample first to see if you really want to go forward with this. This is serious. This is not a toy. It can be drastic. This is not some leisure pursuit to help you relax or to make you feel good. This is a life-changing proposition. So it's a good idea to be sure that this is the path you wish to take. Your life is at stake. Now, I'm speaking to alcoholics. If you are an alcoholic, and if you are following a 12-step lifestyle, there is nothing here that will conflict with your 12-step practice or with your book, Alcoholics Anonymous, the big book. If you aren't, that's fine too. You'll still benefit from this. If you're a loved one, much of this will apply to you too. There will be other recordings for you in the future. But right now, for the moment, I'm speaking to alcoholics. Now, you could be recovered unrecovered, recovering, whatever you call yourself. If you have never not been able to stop once you've started and have not been able to not start, then I'm speaking as if you are listening. I'm speaking to you. If you're new to meditation, it will be helpful for you to have a little bit of a primer for this particular technique of what I call meditation. If you're not new to meditation, if you have a practice or if you've studied some other form or technique of meditation that it might be particularly important to you because this meditation will be entirely new and entirely different, you won't be used to it. You might get caught up in making comparisons, comparing this technique with others you've practiced. This meditation, this particular technique, is unlike anything you have ever learned in the past. And getting caught up with comparisons will distract and will reduce the effectiveness that you might otherwise experience. Please have an open mind. I'm not asking you to forget what you think you know about meditation or anything like that. You may have some experience with some of the forms. That's okay. Some of you have skill sets already in place. Others will have some perceptions of what you've heard, what you've read. You can hold on to those. Just don't use them right now, just for the moment. The idea is to see that there are differences and not to become gullible. I'm not looking to remake you. I'm not looking to have you accept my ideas. Don't let anyone infuse their ideas into you. Not about spirituality. Not about anything. You can listen. You can watch. You make your choices based upon your discernment. That is what you're learning here. There's no reprogramming or dogma. There is deprogramming, an unraveling of prejudices, and a freedom to see for yourself with the knots of other people's wills untied. It's an unlearning of dogma. It's a reconsideration of beliefs. An open mind is a good thing, but not to the point of gullibility. Don't believe. Don't disbelieve. Just see. Simply come to a place where true and false can be reviewed objectively. Objectivity is a good thing. The word meditation is simply part of the language that we use to convene our interests. It's really a misnomer. What we're doing is discovering conscious contact with God. And this meditation, we call it, is really just a device. It's a tool to become conscious. The meditation or the exercise is not the objective. The state of consciousness that it steers us toward is. So don't get hung up on process or procedure. Just beyond that is what is important. The vehicle is not so important. It is the change of position while on the journey and the increasing closeness to the destination, right? For that, we need a path. This is that path. Conscious just means aware, aware of thoughts, whatever those thoughts are passing through your head. It's like your head is a lens. That's all it is. Not forming opinions, but just seeing. That's all. It's simple. But it takes practice. Not much, but a little. Do this always as if it's the very first time that you've ever done it. Don't look to make anything happen. Remember, please, meditation is not the answer. 
The state of consciousness it brings you to is where the answers come. Answers are not up to me. They're not up to you. Nothing is up to us. But the state of God consciousness opens up all answers to you, whatever they are. We don't know what they're going to be. Do not abuse this technique. This is not a feel-good proposition. In fact, there could be some pain as you begin to face your past in ways that maybe you never have before. Meditation is a way for you to detach from your current state of involvement with your environment, from your thoughts, from your fantasies, your little schemes, your designs. All of the involvements that have stolen your consciousness and made you subject to the wills of other people around you, perhaps turned you into a people pleaser, an outwardly fixated person instead of an inwardly guided one. Now, if you belong to a fellowship that proposes meditation as one of its principles, especially a 12-step fellowship, then this meditation you will find to be just what the doctor ordered. It is not religious. It's only spiritual. It won't matter if you refer to yourself as a recovered alcoholic or a recovering alcoholic. It can be either. If you have recovered as a result of having a spiritual awakening, as a result of practicing the 12 steps, then this meditation will be especially practical to you. It will bring alive your program of recovery in ways that will become more and more apparent as time goes on. And it will not implant opposing spiritual philosophies or directions with you. It is 100% compatible, not only compatible, but in many ways identical to the practice of steps 10 through 12. I can explain more on that later, if you like. If you've already read the book, Real Meditation for Real Alcoholics, then you already know what I'm talking about. Now, speaking of doctors, the meditation you're being presented with addresses alcoholic obsession. That's true. But all obsessions and all of the problems that these cause. Physical health issues, even cancer and heart disease, any condition which has emotional roots, most conditions will be healed through the God consciousness that this meditation brings. There is no question. Skewed spirituality always results in emotional disturbance, and it is your improper relationship with these emotions that makes us ill. It manifests in many physical and mental diseases. Now, if you follow my directions exactly, that will all be in your past. There's no need to create controversy from this idea. Any doctor worth his salt will be pleased for your progress. He may even like to take credit for it himself. <laughs> That's fine. Just remember that if you are under a doctor's care, and if you have become drug dependent, you will still need doctors to wean you off medications when they are no longer needed. So be sure to find a doctor willing to work with you in this regard. You might have to shop around. As you continue seeing your doctors for any of these conditions, they will be amazed. And you will live long, happily, and whole. You might find it beneficial to have them review your need for prescriptions as they will reduce and they will fall away. Have doctors safely wean you away from these medications as the need falls. Some might resist, but ask them how to wean off of them if it's safe to do so. Yes, this particular recording is for the alcoholic, but is alcohol really the alcoholic's problem? No, it is a symptom of a problem. The problem is better classed as a spiritual disease. Obsessions, like an obsession to drink, are merely symptoms. When you become God conscious, you will become spiritually healthy. And when you are spiritually healthy, as obsessive behaviors fall away, then the need to treat symptoms of those obsessions will fall away too. If you have availed yourself to a way of attaining spiritual awakening, say the 12-step process or some other spiritually effective means for reawakening, you will need to maintain that wakefulness. Well, now you have it. It is the meditation exercise that follows. Now, this is not just for 12-step folks. If you're not in a fellowship like that, this exercise will work for you, too. I'm speaking to alcoholics, but the words are not challenging for non-alcoholics to hear. There will be materials for those suffering from other maladies, too. So feel free to come back and download them. They'll always be at no cost, always. Now, do this meditation before bedtime. If you have a nightly review before you retire at night, do this meditation after you've done that. Do it just prior to lights out. Do this meditation first thing in the morning. If you're planning your day prior to getting out of bed in the morning, of course, you'll continue to do that. That's an excellent idea. Knowing where you stand relative to each day can be comforting. It can be securing. The meditation should be the last thing you do before you begin your day. Fit this meditation technique into your 12-step practice until you see that it is really just part of the same thing. Do not use this in conjunction with other meditations. Do not mix methods. If you're going to do that, you'd be better off just abandoning this and moving on to something else. If I ask you to be aware of your hand, do not focus on your breathing. My directions are very precise, and in order to get the results, you will need to not redo the directions. It's important. Consider this a fair and serious caution. 
It would be very unwise to test this. Do not add anything to what I'm going to ask you to do. Also, do not fixate on body parts or functions as some other meditations often direct you to do. That is a deterrent to this technique. To add or change anything that you are being taught will render this technique void. In fact, it can be harmful. Do not add anything rhythmic like listening to your heart or breathing or music rhythm or sound effects. These are seductive. They're not awakening and they're very dangerous. You can notice your natural body rhythms if you happen to, but do not lean on them for exhilaration. Music, rhythms are hypnotic and trance-inducing. We are breaking you free from these forces, not getting you further attached to them. Similarly, do not add mantras or any repetition of words. This meditation is entirely wordless. I'm the only one that's going to be talking, and only temporarily at that. And whatever you do, do not fall into a trance or into sleep. Very important. Do not want consciousness to drift or to become hazy in any way. Now, there will be a mysterious reluctance to use this meditation. You will experience a sensation that urges you to stop. They might want you to stop once you've started, or to not even get started, to do something else. What you're doing threatens something inside you that doesn't want you to wake up. You might notice some fear rising up. Fear is an emotion characterized by dread or an expectation of harm. But it is also the desire to escape, or to avoid harm, or to avoid displeasure of something conceived as a power. There is a power greater than yourself, and it is that self that fears. This is the kind of fear that your lower self experiences when confronted with truth about it. Once you get past that, and it won't be long, it will become easier. And it may not seem easy at first, but it does get easier. First, it seems almost unnatural. That is because even though it is natural, you haven't been. Not for a long time. Now, there may be a voice, a voice of your thoughts or a voice impersonating someone else, telling you to replace this method with more involved meditation, so that this is too simple. I don't mean to scare you, but this sometimes happens. This is a meditation that will increase your awareness of your surroundings, and you will see the world for what it really is without anyone telling you what it is. You will see true and false. You'll see truth and lies without reacting to it, without anything using truth or lies to influence you. This is real freedom, and you're about to experience it. You will become more and more conscious and aware with each moment that you return from your unconscious state. This has, after all, been your problem, hasn't it? You have not been conscious. You've been asleep. Maybe it doesn't seem so at the moment. It's an old spiritual axiom passed on through the ages that some of us live in states of sleep, all the while dreaming that we are awake. It's an appalling idea. It is true, perhaps especially true of the alcoholic. It is true of anyone who has resorted to certain indulgences. Obsessions like alcohol, drugs, food, sex, tobacco, even judgment, all of these are poor substitutes for love, substitutes for God's love, and all in a futile attempt to regain our footing to restore what we perceive as manageability over our own lives. It isn't. Meanwhile, life becomes more and more unmanageable. We go more and more out of control, while others come and take control over us. Our lives had become unmanageable. The word become implies that although this has been true, it has not always been so. It has happened over time, and it's been a process. The return of manageability can also be a process as you slowly let go of the emotional ties that have kept you bound to yourself, the bondage of self. This meditation will reverse it. As you meditate, you will see and perceive ideas like these, very many others, as they are revealed to you, not as a result of anything that I say or that any human being tells you, but as it will be revealed to you in the new light of truth that this meditation will permit you to walk in. See, if we separate from our lower self, our ego, and practice it, meditate, we go through our day conscious with the ability to watch and see that selfishness, and see that dishonesty, that resentment, the fear. We can see it all rise before it washes over us and governs our emotions. Then we are patient and tolerant automatically without trying. That funny idea that we ask God to remove them can only happen if we are awake and aware, God conscious, to see them. Conscious enough to see them prevents them from overwhelming us. We meet up with that well-known spiritual concept, he knows what you need before you ask. He does. It's so cool. It's like the Colgate Invisible Shield. 
If you are in a treatment facility or a hospital or a sober living facility of some kind, find a place where you can do this meditation alone. You only need a few minutes. If there are sounds off in the distance, that's okay. It will become part of the experience. Reduce that as much as you can and leave the rest. Avoid doing this exercise as part of a group effort. Conscious contact happens anywhere, but practicing this exercise is best kept a private affair between you and your maker. So better to lock yourself in a closet somewhere. After a while, you might want to share this experience with others, with those you wish to work with, protégés, friends. Share them these recordings. When others see that you're happier and better off, better than you've ever been, when they see your life coming together, when they see your anxieties, your fears falling away, and how less affected by stress you're becoming, when they see how you don't seem so stricken and affected by fears, how you seem to be without vices and bad habits and are becoming physically well, and how you don't make excuses anymore, you will have their respect. Tell them where you got it. Like you, they will never be asked to do anything more than what I'm asking you to do now. To be awake, aware, and God conscious so that you can have your life back. Uncontrolled by others. Directed by your natural intuitive vision that comes from God. God consciousness is an existence. It's a place to be always. You can call it grace. You can call it theosis. Woo-wee. Te. Kripa. Christ referred to this as being in the kingdom. The sunlight of the spirit is possible only when we access it through awareness. Then all forms of anger, annoyance, irritation, even frustration, fear, they just fall away harmlessly. There is an inner heaven. There is a kingdom. It's always here. It's always at hand. You can reach it any time you want. You can choose it. What you have in the meditation that follows is how to do that. Finally. And don't confuse what's here with other meditations, things called daily meditations or affirmations or visualization prayers, reflections. These are religious practices. This is not some trick to get you to accept the religion or to abandon your Judeo-Christian principles. This is not a religious affair. There isn't a promotion of any doctrines or any spiritual movement here. You're not going to find that. What you will find is access to an ancient technique that is the missing link to spiritual recovery. So, are you ready? Are you ready to wake up? Maybe you've already been rocketed into the fourth dimension of existence. Maybe you're still looking for that experience. Whether you are drinking, not drinking, in a program, in trouble, or in trouble in a program, you are about to begin a journey you did not know you could make through space and time that you didn't even know existed. There is nothing else. There are no teachings. There are no doctrines, no gurus, no books, no ministers with the answers to all of your problems. All answers come through God. And this meditation, this exercise of mindful God consciousness is how to get there. It is the there. It is how to. There will be other exercises too in the future. I suggest you come back and refresh yourself once in a while if you ever need or if you ever fall away. God consciousness is a place to live. It's not just the final destination, but a place to be always in perpetuity. You are about to discover continued growth and ongoing consciousness as you exist and live in this dimension. This is what has been missing. Now you have it. I'm glad I had this opportunity to speak with you. I'm glad you took the time to listen. I hope this has been encouraging or helpful. If you take on this God consciousness as I propose, you will not be sorry. In fact, you will have an amazing life. It is a life of perfect peace, perfect ease, free from anger, a quiet place in the sunshine where you can live detached and out of harm's way and protected with your thinking and behaviors guided by a loving God instead of emotionally charged and open to the emotional charges of others, susceptible to forces that enter and control you through their cruelty or their love. You are about to lose all excuses for continuing that way and see the folly and the idea that anger and emotions are normal and human. They're not. They're not human. They're inhuman. Freedom from harmful emotions is not only possible, but it's necessary to be human. It's not reserved for special enlightened people. It is for all, for the common ordinary man, for me, for you. It is heaven on earth, and it can come through you if you sit still long enough. So please proceed. The journey of your life begins.